right, welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Uh, my name is Marie Keston Zahn. I am the museum director for the Harwich Historical Society. Uh, I have not seen so many people in here in, uh, in a long time. We're, we're so happy you, you came out and joined us in person. Thank you as well to everybody that is joining us virtually. Uh, this program is also going to be recorded and uploaded on YouTube. I'll send the, the link out. It'll be on the Harvest Historical Society website and our social media, and we're going to arrange with Channel 18 to have it on there as well. So if you want to share it with uh, friends and family or watch it again, it will be made available as well. Uh, uh, if you enjoy this program, you may enjoy some other programs with us uh, this year. We're thrilled to bring back our lantern tours at the uh, cemetery across the street over at the First Congregational Church. We're going to be having tours on Friday, October 15th and Saturday, October 23rd. There are going to be three tours uh, starting at 5 o'clock, 5.30 and 6.00. Each one will take about an hour, and we are requesting registration in advance. So you can send us an email, give us a call, or even you know, chat with me afterwards if you want to sign up for that. Uh, we are going to be limiting the number of participants on the lantern course this year. Uh, one more housekeeping thing. Uh, we've got a couple of books available related to this program. You'll actually learn a lot about one of them, uh, The Birth of a Building by Virginia Joan. Nancy's going to talk to you about that, uh, as well as Community Life, written by our own Dr. Joan Maloney. So we do have those on sale as well. You can also order them uh, online for our gift shop order form. And uh, this is the last week that the First Academy building and the Kroll Barn will be open for this season. Saturday will be our last day for open tomorrow during the farmer's market, 3 to 6 p.m., Friday, 11 to 3, and Saturday, 11 to 3 as well. So it'll be the, the last time you see us this season, although we will be open in December for some last minute uh, holiday shopping in the gift shop. All right, so I'm going to introduce our speaker. Uh, I know she's familiar to a, a lot of folks here, I heard as you were coming in. Uh, we're so happy to have her here virtually. Um, so I'm going to tell you a little bit about Nancy for those who are not familiar with her wonderful accomplishments. Nancy Weil Shoemaker is a printer's daughter. She grew up with type, with words, and with creation of images. Coming home from school, she often found her parents' office busy with artists, writers, historians, planning a book or publication grown from their interests. The first job that she proofread with her mother was the New Alchemy Journal, A Guide to Sustainable Living. After earning a Bachelor of Arts degree in English, Nancy managed the Campus Center print shop at the University of Massachusetts in Amherst. She went on to teach graphic arts at Cape Cod Regional Technical High School for 12 years. She is now a graphic designer, book publisher, and owner of West Barnstable Press. At 36, she enlisted in the U.S. Coast Guard Reserves as a bosun's mate, eight years at a life-saving station, and nine years working on buoys and lighthouses. A town historical commissioner, Nancy is the historian of the Barnstable and West Barnstable Historical Societies, and is active with the Coast Guard Heritage Museum and the 1717 Meeting House Foundation. She was a camera operator, interviewer, and director for over 100 Tales of Cape Cod programs on cable access. She lectures on the history of the town of Barnstable to the Town Citizens Academy and has written a play with Harvard resident Susan Kossoff about Mercy Otis Warren. And uh, Mercy Otis Warren is, a, is an important name here, particularly for Nancy, because in 2018, Nancy was the recipient of the Mercy Otis Warren Cape Cod Woman of the Year Award. Which is quite quite the honor. So uh, Nancy also wanted me to let you know that she moved to West Harwich in 1960 and she graduated from Harwich High School. So I know we've got a few of your classmates here. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. Okay. Hi everybody. Nice to see you all, or sort of. Uh, yeah, I had to be virtual because. I went to a birthday party of an 87 year old lovely lady and one of the guests uh, told us this Monday that she was positive with the COVID test. So I'm, I'm not sick. I don't think I have it, but out of all 
um, possible caution, we decided that I should not be amidst you all. So I would love to be with you so I could have more give and take with the audience. Um, tonight is, is about a building, but it's also about a librarian, Ginny Doan, Doan or Virginia Doan. And it's about a printer and would-be filmmaker, my father, Jack Vile. Uh, he made a movie, which you're going to see, has a few issues, which I'll explain before we see it. Uh, but Ginny's book, I'll be a blatant advertiser, was printed in 1965. Mm -hmm. And the building left us in November of 1964. Um, she was, as so many of us, so upset and shocked when the building went down. Um, <clears throat> something that I'll explain a little bit of the reasons why it happened at the end, but um, at the time there was a, a vote in the town uh, to decide what to do with a certain amount of money they had for two different projects in town. And they decided that the exchange building was not the preferred one. Uh, at the end of this, I think you you may somewhat understand why, but uh, it just does seem like such a shame. This building was so hard to tear down. It was so well built. Uh, so before I start, I was going to show you a few other books, um, some that my father printed as the local printer on the Cape. This one was the 375th, I'm sorry, 275th um, anniversary. We have 375 in Barnstable. And this book uh, has a lot of details in it. It mentions the exchange building, but other buildings as well. Another book that he did with, um, and these are done with, with names of people you would know, Cahoons and uh, Marion as last name, uh, all sorts of Payne, Mildred Payne, uh, wonderful books. I hope that they still have some copies of some of these for you um, to buy at the exchange building. I mean, I was at the Exchange Building, listen to me, at the Brooks Academy. But let's move on, I think. Oh, you know, before we do, I, I do have other, I'm being a terrible sales lady here. Um, these are two other books that were done in that time period also by my dad and something we might think of printing again. But I did have Joan's book, which is wonderful. I know you've mentioned it, but we can't mention it enough. She does a, a wonderful job of describing uh, the community and somewhat through the filter of banking because the Cape Cod Five was the uh, publisher of the book. Uh, there are so many other interesting books. Uh, we have also the book that she did for Images of America. And we have in 1937, uh, what was his first name now? Payne did this incredible book, Joshua Payne. And um, this was reprinted in 37, I think. No, it was 37. Um, so there's just so many different books. I guess I won't, I've got a lot of them, <laughs> but I just want to mention one recent one. And this is uh, John Rainio's granddaughter. He was the police chief for decades in Harwich. And she has produced this book a few years ago about the Cape Verde um, population, kind of a genealogical um, exploration. So I'll stop with my advertisements, sorry. <laughs> so I guess we should start with our pictures. Okay, give me just a second to pull those windows back up. <laughs> sure. I got, I got a lot of windows going here. Okay, oh. in the oh. meantime, I'll describe, I'm sure everybody here is under 30 and doesn't understand about uh, our different types of media. But this was taken, the film you're going to see in, in a few minutes was taken from a VHS tape. It has some issues because when it was digitized, some of the sound and audio got bumped off from each other. But I also want to show you, I have movies and this is what was the film you're going to see was an eight millimeter movie. And then I also have of Harwich movies that are 16 millimeter from the late 1920s into 1930. So something maybe we'll, I'm starting to digitize a lot of them, but something kind of neat. So that's all because I had a father and a grandfather who were uh, into attempting to make movies. And my, my dad did. So are you ready yet or? 
All right, I'm gonna share my screen now. So yeah. bear with me, because like I said, I've got a lot of screens to share. Just wanna make sure everybody can see them, both in person and virtually. Okay, no, that's the wrong one. There we go. All right, Nancy, are we looking at the exchange building? We are looking at the first exchange building. In 1855, Perfect. this building was built and it was a beautiful building appreciated by everyone. People might say, why Harwich? That these incredible buildings uh, were, were built on that very same corner. But Harwich was really a geographic center of Cape Cod. People think, oh yeah, maybe Yarmouth or Barnstable. But if you consider coming from Provincetown down to Bourne, which really does have a central location. Uh, this building sadly burned down in 1876. It was around, and actually in January, so it was around just about 20 years. It was a smaller building. It was 43 feet by 64. The, the auditorium, I'm sorry, was 43 feet by 64. The width of the whole building was 58 feet. Um, you can show the next picture and that picture will show you what happened to it. It was had a fire and was destroyed, just burned right down to the ground. Okay. Theoretically, I can show the next picture. <laughs> this is what happens when we have so many windows open. Bear with me, guys. Sure. I, I can shuffle my art, my notes around in the meantime. Oh, okay. Here we go. Oh, yeah. You have a nice full color painting. Oh, yes. Beautiful. It is currently on display right now at Brooks Academy. And this is a Cahoon, right? Yes, it is. Charles oh. Cahoon. Right. Right. So very sad to have this happen, but it didn't take long for a banker, uh, Chester Snona. He was the banker of the National Bank and the Cape Cod Five Cent Savings Bank. Uh, he came along and said that he was going to build another exchange building. Uh, at that time, uh, this would be 18, let's see, 1884, he was pushing to get this building made. He raised about $40,000 to have the new building made. And uh, we can now move on to the next building. All right, this is our new building. Uh, a lot of interesting things. Ginny is going to talk about this, um, about parts of this building that went to people and thank heavens, parts of the building were, were salvaged. My father got one of the posts, Ginny got one of them, and she also got some of the um, stained glass windows. And I think both of her children are here tonight. I sure hope they are. So let me just, yeah. Oh, they're both here. Oh, good, good, great, wonderful. This is Ginny's night. So again, the population then, when they built this building was only about 3,400. And back in 1964, 65, when the building uh, was torn down, the population was still only a little over 4,000. Amazing how it didn't uh, build so much. And what's the population now? I'm, I'm sure it's another digit up. Um, That's 12,000. Well, okay, yeah. So this building was also 58 feet wide. It was because it sat on the very same footprint. Uh, 110 feet tall, I'm hearing different versions, but 110 sounds about proper. The Cape Cod National Bank had at that time $300,000 as their total uh, resources and the Cape Cod Five had deposits of over 300,000 to give you an idea of how much money was involved. Um, at that time, Harwich Center had a millinery store, a stove, a hardware store, a tin store, two dry goods stores, three groceries, a furniture and a carpet ware room, clothing department, two drugstores, apothecaries back then, an artist and a jeweler and an inn. So it was a very active place. It was not only a geographic center, but it was definitely a business center for Cape Cod. So they decided to start doing this. Now this uh, stage that you see there is a stage coach. Hey, and then on to I'm sounding like I'm repeating myself. Are you hearing that? Yeah, we're getting some feedback. Hang on. Getting some feedback. Hang on. Maybe it's not. Hello. All right. Make sure if you're joining us uh, at home, you have your uh, 
computer microphones muted. That'll that'll help fix that. All right, I think we're good. So this was a stagecoach. This picture was taken in 1887, and so the building is quite new. Uh, and the stagecoach only lasted for another year or two after that. It went all the way to Chatham and then off Cape. Um, in fact, when Sylvanus Finney, who was the person who started the Barnesville Patriot newspaper in 1830, he was one of the major speakers. He was sort of the um, uh, man of the, well, the master of ceremonies for that night. And he had to leave and get a stage to go to the tra a train and make another meeting. Think how it sounds like nowadays of trying to get everything in. But let me describe a little more about the building. The next picture you could show. And there's another picture and that's supposed to be, um, I don't know if I have a date on that. I guess I shouldn't have said, okay. I don't think I have a date on that one. I have a date on the next one. Um, but you see a carriage there. So it's probably the late 1800s. So by April 15th of 1884, they had six teams, which would be uh, teams of horses and, and carts and 18 men working on excavating the cellar. By July, they had 100,000 bricks brought to them from West Barnstable. West Barnstable had a brick company uh, until the mid 1930s. and uh, a major uh, supplier of bricks, manufacturer and supplier of bricks on Cape Cod and even off the Cape. Then uh, one kind of interesting thing, and this is all from Ginny's book. A lot of what I'm doing right here is from Ginny's book. Uh, they, there was a temporary shelter for a lot of the people from off Cape who came to build this building. And it was a hotel called Hotel de Bum. And it had approximately 20 occupants. And her book even describes the cook who was there and um, uh, different descriptions of, of the borders in, in, in the building, um, kind of fun. So the next uh, thing that happened was in August, there arrived two iron girders and they were 58 feet long. They arrived at the Harwich Depot and their transportation to the site uh, took a lot of planning and it took two four wheel trucks. Amazing. Um, so these girders were, um, were lined up and building came along. One of the interesting things was about the stained glass windows. There were 25 of them in number and the plate glass was imported from Germany and France with duties on the glass alone. Just the tariff came to $250, which is a lot of money at that time. The heart of the building was the auditorium. You can go to the next picture. And uh, they spared no expense there. Mr. Snow, again, Chester Snow, is determined to have the finest theater outside of the city of Boston. And so he had equipment and scenery constructed there uh, for, th for the theater uh, with the Boston Theater. Uh, I guess, well, this picture, by the way, is 1890, 80, I'm sorry, this one is 1887 also, wow. Um, looks like it's a winter picture. And they describe the building in some places as three stories, some places four. I say it's eight stories because there was a basement and Ginny will describe how the basement had, when I was around, it had the police, the, the police department in the basement and it had a shooting range. The next floor was mercantile. There were two separate uh, stores there. The next, they say one story, I really say is two because it was the theater and then it was the whole uh, balcony up above, which had box seats. I mean, that was really, to me, another floor. The next one up, and you'll see pictures of this um, coming up, so I probably shouldn't tell you too much yet, but uh, it was the roller skating rink. And I'll wait till we get there to tell you a little more about that. But that even had a second floor to it. Then above that was another floor that was for designing and building sets for the theater below and for other um, maintenance of you know, situations for the building. So you can go to the next picture. And there you see the building looking west and the preferred form of, the only form of transportation. The first cars that came to the Cape were um, I think 1904 or 1905 to give you an idea of how you can date your pictures. So we can go to the next. 
And this is Old Home Week. Old Home Week was a, a was something that was done around the nation, but Harwich was the first town uh, in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts to have an old home week. It was a meant, meant again to have the community gather around, get to see each other again, celebrate. Uh, patriotic uh, uh, churches were involved and look at the ladies with their bonnets, quite something. And the next picture is the Harwich Agricultural Fair at the Exchange Building. And so they would sell very much like our farmer's market that you mentioned, uh, they would have prizes of the largest pumpkin or whatever. The next picture I think is maybe even a little better. And this is now in the auditorium. So you can see up above the chandelier to its left, it's black right there. That's one of the box, yes, that's a box seat. Uh, quite a beautiful building. My sister graduated from there in 1962 and I hope Sue Kossoff and other people from Harwich Junior Theater, now Cape Cod Theater Company, will talk a little bit about this building's role in the Harwich Junior Theater. Okay, the next picture is more, another one of Old Home Week. And the next one is one that you might have seen recently because it, we chose it. Uh, Marie and I and the people at the bank of Cape Cod Five chose it for the calendar. It was this June, this, the, I'm sorry, January's picture. So there is that beautiful building next to the Congregational Church. And uh, I guess we'll go to the next one. And this is where we could talk a little bit about Harwich Junior Theater. And if I was there, um, I would I would be uh, doing that with, with all of you, but I, uh, maybe we'll wait for some of that conversation at the end. This I think is a picture of a, an event that was before uh, Harwich Junior Theater ever got there. In fact, I have, let me see if I can find that note. Um, they describe a lot of the um, building. Well, the, oh, here's something. Over 800 people from all over the Cape attended the first night's performance of the Exchange Building. And well over 500 people came to enjoy the comedy cast, C-A-S-T-E, and the farce. I'm gonna say the first word and spell the next one because I don't wanna get um, kicked out of here. The, the, it's a farce, a play called Box and C-O-X. I don't know what the play was about. Uh, it was on the evening of April 8th. And a lot of the uh, offerings were plays that had been played for over 30 years by the Boston Museum Company. So there was a, definitely a connection with Boston and the exchange building. Okay, the next picture. This is the skating rink and above it is, uh, they called it the promenade. It even had a, a 13 square foot, they said, that doesn't sound very big. I wonder if they really meant it was that small area for musicians to play. It was a pine floor. Uh, a lot of mahogany was used throughout the building on the stairways and so on. Um, so to me, you know, that's definitely two floors. And I can picture there, there have been times, in fact, during the first night that they were open, they had 175 people skating there. Um, and then up above, there were something like 80 people watching. I picture mothers with their children skating down below, maybe pushing their perambulators, carriages, watching their children and going back and forth. And how wonderful that sometimes they had live music there too. Okay, um, next picture. And this picture is where, I guess we'll just, this was taken very close to getting close to, it was taken in the 50s um, of when the building would no longer be there. And I guess I'd like to go to the next two pictures. I could hold them off, but um, why don't we do the next two pictures? Oh, by the way, the roller skating, admission was 10 cents. And if you had to rent skates, it was 15 cents. Um, and I was wrong about the numbers. The first night there were 175 skaters and 150 people were watching from above, quite amazing. And they were often listening to music by the Harwich Coronet Band. So the next picture 
explains a little something. And actually, could you go back to me? Do you mind? Sure. Give me a second to figure out how we're going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can explain a little bit. When you get back to me, okay. you're going to see a picture to my left. There it is. And that's by Milt Welt. And Milt Welt was a very, very dear friend. He and I worked in business together a little bit. Um, I did ads for a bank with his artwork. Uh, we just became very, very close friends. He was a close friend with my dad too. He was also a selectman at the time of the uh, decision to tear the building down. Now they also did, as, as you'll hear from Ginny, they had a town vote as to where the monies should be allotted. Uh, my father printed the ballots and I bet I have them somewhere. Mm -hmm. I definitely have an awful lot of things to archives to take care of as the printer's daughter. But um, here's a brochure that I found and we'll go back to the other picture in a minute, but you'll see that it's familiar. I just wanted to make sure you can see it in a, few, in a minute or two. He and I were talking one day at lunch. We would go out to lunch, sometimes just the two of us, sometimes he and Barbara. I remember the last time we went out, uh, it was their 75th wedding anniversary and I had a bottle of champagne at lunch. And boy, did I get the stories. But anyway, <laughs> truly, but we won't, another, another uh, session. So uh, he, I said, how could you have let that happen? How could the building have been demolished? He said it was a very tough decision and an awful lot of it had to do with uh, the, the promised development of Bell's Neck area. And that's the picture that you're going to see. And then even I have another piece of printing that I found in my father's collection, uh, 1967. And again, they're still talking about uh, developing other areas in town, but particularly that area of Bell's Neck it was going to have hundreds of houses. Um, I'm sure somebody can give you more detailed information than I can, but that whole area of, of marsh and the beauty of that, 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 you know, that we can see eagles and, and uh, I'm trying to think, you know, all, all sorts of interesting birds and snakes. And my father and I once saw a, um, what was it? It was snapping turtle that came out that looked like it had the tail the size of an alligator. I mean, it's a, it's a real gift to not just Harwich, but to Cape Cod to have Bell's Neck. And this was going to be a development that had canals so that every single house had their own little backyard waterway. Uh, it just would have wiped out all these animals, you know, uh, flora and fauna. So it, it's just an interesting thing. You can go back to that map now. Um, things are not always what we thought they were because most of us were really furious that this happened, but, you know, I guess they chose the better of two evils. Where are we at? There we go. All right. Nancy, are you looking at the map? Yes, I am. Yes. So that's, you know, Bell's Neck Road. Um, go there tomorrow and thank Milt Welt and the other two uh, selectmen and also the town because the town voted to not spend the, um, it was, I have it here somewhere, it was something like $15,000 to tear down the building and it took forever because it was built so well. So now I think we'll go on to the movie. Um, um, I'm just yeah. gonna. But before you do, yeah, while you're, I'll, I'll talk for a minute and let me know when you're ready. So uh, this again was, was digitized and it's not exactly the way the um, tape is. The actual, what happened was my dad made it in eight millimeter film, the smaller film. And then he made it into VHS so that we could make a TV show for Tales of Cape Cod, which is the show you're going to see next. And then I had it digitized to a, um, you know, a, a file that we can use on our computers. But that, caused something, a, a lag in the, the voices and the visuals. And Marie said, should we, you know, maybe not have the visual or the voice? So I think both are necessary. You're going to have to have a little patience that a second or two off, the person is emoting, talking, and the sound is going to be either lagging or I'm not, I've studied it a few times and I'm not sure which way it went, but you're going to love seeing Ginny. It's just wonderful. 
And I'm a little younger too. <laughs> I'm ready whenever you are. I'm ready, I'm ready. <laughs> Welcome to another show brought to you by Tales of Cape Cod, a historic group based in Barnstable Village that's dedicated to preserving Cape Cod's history. I'm Nancy Shoemaker. I'm standing in today for Jack Van Eiderstein, who's on a well-deserved vacation. And today we have a guest, Virginia Doan, who I have known for years. She probably read to me my first library book when I was a young child in, uh, in Harwich. And she's here to talk about the Harwich Exchange Building. Ginny, welcome and very nice to have you here. Thank you. Pleased to be here indeed. Would you like me to uh, talk about the book first of all? Well, certainly you may. Now, Ginny is uh, the author of a book that came out um, describing the Harwich Exchange Building, which was in Harwich Center. And uh, she might like to tell us a little bit about it. Yes, I'll get to the other part about that, uh, about the whole building. But this I did want to point out, this was a labor of love because this happened after the building had gone down. And uh, we felt very sad after it gone down. Oh, yes. Yeah. I missed too. Yeah. yeah, I missed that. Anyway, um, and because it was such an important part, even though I was a summer visitor, I used to go to dances there in the summer, you know. I think that's a really big shot. Now, can we buy this book anywhere? I think you can buy it. Uh, there are a few copies left at the Harwich Historical Society, so that it would be okay. available there. And the Harwich Historical Society is, is based in um, Brooks Harwich, Academy? Uh, yes, Brooks Academy right. in Harwich. Well, Ginny, can you tell me a little bit about um, how you got interested in the exchange building? Well, I've always been interested in architecture. Uh, and uh, this building absolutely fascinated me. It first reminded me of the very first, what they call the first townhouse in Boston, which where Faneuil Hall is now located. So it became a question of trying to find the details of the building and how it was built. The first one burned, so people were anxious to have another building. And so it came about that they built the tallest building, or was built for them, the tallest building on Cape Cod, and it was a great, great success. Now, the, uh, what year was that? Um, that was in 1885, and that was a great year for all kinds of things. And um, so that's how I got interested in it originally, because I've seen many old buildings, and I particularly like theater buildings. I think theaters are a lot of fun. So that's how I started. Now, I know you, you've also been a mainstay of Harwich Junior Theater. That is correct. And I know that the theater was based, yep. spent many hours there painting. I did. I didn't be artistic at all. But when they wanted someone for public relations, police looking at course, too, at the time. But uh, no, I didn't paint scenery. <laughs> Some of the others do it, for sure. Do you have any fond memories? You could... Plus, all of them are fond memories. And one of the things that I particularly like is that a friend of mine who was also a big um, lover of how it was an exchange hall, and I liberated the ticket office window one night in the dark when the building was being demolished. And you, you liberated it? That's what we call it. <laughs> I got it's you. Now it's, over, <laughs> that, it's over at the Howard Junior yeah. Theater now with good lighting behind it. Yeah. But I thought it might be kind of interesting to explain the various floors and what they were meant for. We would appreciate right. that, yeah. Yes. And those uses were from 1885, you said, that is until it was demolished in 1964? No, some of the, no, there was a period there when the junior theater used all the building except for the town office. Uh -huh. So starting at the top at the cupola, that was a beautifully designed thing. In the old days, you could walk out around it, and it was a landing place, or landmark, I should say, for ships at sea, because it was so tall, tallest building in, in the county. And years later, it was also during World War II as a um, spotter, spotting center for enemy airplanes. I don't recall ever hearing there anything <laughs> came over, and still later for fire. 
and they had all kinds of equipment in order to relay quickly. Then uh, going below that, of course, there was an attic floor there, which is pretty impressive in itself. And that, going, that would be up in here. That would be, no, There's I'm on the third floor. attic Carpet. floor yeah. that was underneath uh, that. The, the most people that don't know about that, because the, the kids did. They learned about that that came to the junior theater. Now, on the third floor was quite a remarkable thing, a beautiful par parquet skating rink and for roller skating that was built right into the building and above that on this floor they had this marvelous strolling place for people who just wanted to watch well, the band the band so there was the skating rink and then above an upper it. little level yes, where right. you could view mm -hmm. skaters yeah. mm -hmm. wow. that is correct and going down we get to the really big auditorium i think you can see that uh we only wanted to have a, a total capacity of 500 for the house junior theater but i'm sure when the days when we had town meeting there were 1500 people that were jammed in it and a beautiful um stage i can't tell you too much about that except that it was quite large without going into a lot of details but that had a balcony above it with a slant floor and the kids used to love to while they were waiting for the show to begin to run those balustrades, you know, make squeaking noise, no matter how much <laughs> we pounded them. And then that is, the, as I say, the, the big floor. Going down to the bottom floor, as you can see in this picture, there was a Toby's Market and uh, Brett's department store. At the time, this was painted, but Bates was there also. There, there's been so many changes in the stores, and my son has plotted them all, but I haven't. Then there's about a six-foot-wide corridor that went to the back, and on one side was the um, selectman's office, and on the other side was the treasurer and town clerk. And people used to crowd down that uh, hallway and you know waiting for the returns which were <laughs> needless to say counted by hand you know well, our ballots bit. my father being the printer in Harwich he printed printed the ballots. Ballots. Yeah, I remember yeah. that yeah so that is the rough outline of that building and uh, it, it was sad that it had to go down but when the town just refused to put any money into the outside was worse than the inside i mean it needed some tender loving care with all this kind of um you know clapboards and and great scallop things and the town just refused to put money into it that way and finally the selectmen in desperation put the article in the warrant so the people could vote on the ballot and that's when it was voted to take it down in 19 uh, right 1964 yeah. yeah yeah i remember that yeah yeah and then, of course, I was spent a lot of time after that taking pictures, slides, in and out of the building and outside, even, even following to the dump. And we had a wonderful person that uh, was in charge of getting rid of something. And I will tell you one funny story connected with that. Oh, I used to... I used to be up there and I had, it came to my mind that we were building our own house on Forest Street and I wanted one of those big timbers that were holding up the uh, tower. So I talked to the man who was in charge of it and he gave me a price of say, let's $5 for it. From a salvage company. Yeah, well, yeah, he was salvaging yeah. and he could sell anything he wanted. That's how I got stained glass windows too. Ooh, and ooh. so, uh, um, I said, well, my husband will be up. What do you think he did? I say, I got the timber for five, but my husband went up and he was dressed up in his bankers' clothes and he charged him $10 for <laughs> it. So we had a good laugh about it. Anyway. Wonderful. Yeah. And, you, and you got a stained glass window out of the We have two. And uh, the, there is an exhibit right now of a great deal of memorabilia in the Howard Historical Society, which our son has arranged. Which again is at... 
at, uh, at Brooks Academy, Brooks Academy. in yeah. Norwich Center. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. All well, that's right. Great. Any other little stories I think that you guys have? Enough. Or... <laughs> okay. All right. We're very lucky to have um, Ginny here because she and her son Robert Doan are um, really experts about the building, and again, have spent so much time there. I remember going to Harwich Junior Theater um, events in the the uh, theater, and maybe from the point of view of a, a young girl, I thought it was a huge theater with yes, box it was. seats it and was. beautiful old drapes and, mm -hmm. and comfortable chairs and I know we were all very upset to see it um, demolished yeah. I remember there was sort of a campaign to keep it and nothing ever we happened had, we had kind of a, a nice thing that after this was Betty Bolt who was the founder of the theater her idea was to have the cast come down first and stand in that long hall so the youngsters could come down and meet the cast after each have, play yeah, I remember that yeah sign they have their program yeah. and interesting to know that it was used as town offices yes in i the didn't back. realize mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. and of course we had uh, high school graduations there yeah. and oh, and the town yes. meetings when town meetings oh indeed really yes. meant they had to heat that up yeah. for four days in advance to get yeah. that warm enough for town meetings Wow. Yeah. Now, how was it heated? By oil uh, furnace? They had um, coal, massive coal furnace, I think, was the last one. In the cellar? Yeah. And was there quite a cellar to it? Yes, and I didn't even go into that, but the police had a, a practice uh, um, place for shooting. Shooting range? Yeah, my husband used to do that, too. So Amazing. I think that's enough to yeah. talk about the building, yes. So well, we've touched just the surface. Yes. But, yes. but if anyone is interested in learning more about it, we do have the book that... Uh, Ginny wrote, which is a wonderful book. And now we're going to go on to a film that my father made, um, I guess in 1964. And uh, he was very interested in um, making documentary movies and very much as I was interested in the history of our town and of Cape Cod. And he went and went with Ginny, had a tour of, the, of each floor, floor by floor. And I remember probably being a little pipsqueak of 10 years old. No, actually it was 14 years old at the time. <laughs> going up and following them and seeing the whole building, uh, being amazed that they had things like a, a skating rink there and so on. So we're now going to be seeing Part, uh, part of this film, um, which will be showing the floors and also, you know, a tour of the whole building and then also the demolition of the building, which is quite a sad sight indeed. So keep it running. Can you all hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, keep it running. And now there's no sound but I'm gonna give you sound. <laughs> um, my father had made it um, so that there was Paul Butterfield Blues Band playing something called East West. It was kind of a abrasive jazz piece that really seemed to fit with this building being torn down. Um, again, we're gonna, I'm gonna get this digitized again and see if we can get a lot of it a little cleaner and get the, because it did sound, it was synced up when it was a VHS tape that I was playing. So, we're going to see um, the beginning of the bell. I think we're going to start seeing a few pictures that you have already seen. Well, that one we hadn't. That's looking across the street. And there we are. So again, the building was uh, 58 feet by 100 feet long. The cellar was only seven feet deep and they actually bragged about that. <laughs> uh, the columns were made at the Borndale Foundry, and you can still go on the other side of Cape Cod Canal over uh, behind where there's a uh, herring run, and you can see the big gear sticking out from one of the water mills that fed the power to that foundry where the columns were made. And these pictures are taken I was in school at the time. I, later you'll see ones I saw with my dad. That's my father's VW bus to the left. Um, my father took these during the day when they were um, before, the few days before, and then starting to take them during the day they uh, did the demolition. It took more than one day, obviously. So the heating of the building was uh, 25 horsepower. Pretty good, huh? 25 horsepower sectional boiler with ornamented 
iron radiators throughout the building. The lighting was by a gas generator that consisted of an iron tank and it held 15 barrels of gasoline. Um, and it was 60 feet to the rear of the building. The plumbing, look at that detail. And that's the uh, town clerk's office in the back of the first floor of the building. There's the beautiful cherry. A lot of the balustrades were made out of cherry. And I wish we had more detail of some of these, but uh, the plumbing on the, um, for the building was a water tank that held 1,050 gallons and it was over the stairway of the third floor. Now here we're looking at uh, again, the theater, by now, seats are out. People have taken what they can take to try to save parts of the building. But if many of you remember wonderful plays um, and of course the town meetings that were there. Now these are pictures up on the third, they call the th third floor. Um, again, there were really two, I call it the fifth floor. This, that was uh, where they made the sets. And look at the beautiful ship's knees. So this is all still on that floor. And again, this is the floor above the roller skating rink. Now this is the, whoop, that was the roller skating rink with that quick picture. This is now on the top floor where the stairway goes up to the cupola. And interesting stories about the cupola. I don't know if I'll be able to say it, everything I want to say about it. Um, but the cupola was a place where they did do sightings looking for U-boats or something from World War II, but it was mainly a lookout for fire. And I have some uh, articles from the Barnstable Patriot. This one is uh, that the tower is furnished with a telescope. I don't know who that man is. Somebody later can tell us who that was. The building is heated by steam, lighted by gas, has all the modern, there's our school that was, no, that is no longer there, it's in the ocean. Um, but that was built, it was, they started to build it in 62 and 63 and then the first class was there in 1964, this very time when we're talking about. Um, so the building had all the modern conveniences and it cost $43,000. So there was a, an interesting couple, their names were, I don't know her first name, of course, they didn't give that, it was Mr. and Mrs. Condon, John Condon, C-O-N-D-O-N, -O and they were in charge in the 19 teens, like 1918 to 1920, of being the people who would go up during the summer, spring, summer, fall, mostly only on the weekends and look for fires. Now this is now showing um, the, the ballot of 1964. But by the way, Mrs. Condon, the one who was looking up and looking for fires, um, she was the only woman fire observer on Cape Cod and probably the state. Nancy, we actually just got donated to us last week a ledger that recorded her name and the other people who went up into the, oh, the tower. Wow. She's going to show it to you tonight. But next that time. is Robert, right? That's you and your and Andrea, I think. Well, wow, that's wonderful. Uh, also, in, uh, going back to the fire and looking up at the tower, on May 8, 1930, they spotted a fire on the platform of the South Harwich Railroad Station, which of course is also no longer there. There's the beautiful cupola. Now you're gonna see a few people. I want everyone to be on the lookout for people. Um, I know, I'm pretty sure Bob Joy is there. Uh, who did some building moving, and I imagine maybe taking down of buildings. And a gentleman, there's one of the, the stores from the interior. Uh, Todd Lee, I think, is there. And you're going to see an older gentleman named Ernest Dudley Chase. And he was uh, very well known in printing cards and um, being the artist for cards. He did a lot of paintings. He did a painting of the exchange building before it was torn down. Uh, he, Rustcraft, which was a big card maker, ended up buying his business. So he was a, a mover and a shaker, and you'll see him in a few minutes.
So pic picture this angry jazz music. Dad had it perfectly down. That's Ernest Dudley Chase. And he's there drawing the building as I'm speaking. <laughs> There's his drawing. Do you all have that in the society? I'm sure we do. I hope so. I, I know we at least have a copy of it. Not the oh, other. good. Okay. And by the way, the drawings that were done in Ginny's book, uh, The Birth of a Building, were done by Betsy Hammond. And Betsy Hammond lived in Harwich. She uh, was involved with the Harwich Junior Theater. And Sue Kossoff tells me that she uh, designed and, and worked on a lot of the sets for the theater. And that's uh, Don Hall in the middle. Again, there's probably a lot of people who have moved here since, but there's some of us old timers still around. And here's the iconic moment when the cupola comes crashing down. Unbelievable. Why couldn't they have saved that and made a band stand out of it or, you know? Yeah. Bob or anybody, if you want to add something, just push Marie aside and <laughs> grab the mic. You can find me in the dark. So far. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, we do have uh, some of the stained glass windows. Uh, before you leave tonight, look up the stairs and we can see some of them. Uh, it looks much better in the daytime. You can see the light coming through. Mm. And we also have the sign that was hanging up that says it's Jane's building. Little stars on it. It is upstairs as well. There's the cupola again. Yeah, I, I suppose you can, well, wait till the, there's a moment when the, the uh, workers, now they had to, as they had to hire people from off Cape to um, build the building, they also had to hire a lot of people to come and tear down the building. And there's an interesting spot where you're going to see, I believe it's the finally down to the roller skating rink floor. Maybe it's the floor above that. And they were having a hard time getting it down. There are pictures somewhere of a bulldozer up on the fourth floor. And so it just makes you shake your head because if it could handle the weight of a bulldozer, why couldn't they have let it sit there for a couple of years, mothball it and eventually preserve it? We do have demolition delays in progress now, you know, it, uh, well, look at that from the, from the north looking south. And in Barnstable, we have an 18 month delay and that helps people think about what they're gonna do um, and the implications of it. And there's a group in Chatham called Preserve Our Past. Uh, they're gonna be interested in this video. I had told them about it and they're trying to save buildings also. But this was a time of uh, everything was new. You know, 1963, 64, we were changing. We were kind of changing over our culture into as we have been doing in the last 10 years. Um, changing things and, and people's ideas of what was good or bad for society were very different. So I guess, why don't you stop so that we have time for other, for people to talk, but I do have one more thing I want to read um, to everybody. If I can find it in my papers here. It's, it's actually just has about a minute and a half of video. Oh, okay, great. Because you, you can't beat that last shot. I was watching it earlier today, getting a little yeah. choked in my office. So it's, yeah. it's worth it for that closing. Shot. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
So if you haven't seen the uh, CD cooking painting that we looked at, it's actually just to the left of the uh, projector screen. Once I turn the lights back on, check it out on your way out as well. And that's the, uh, the first exchange building painted by uh, Charles Finley. Oh, well, here's the, the dancing demolition crew. And I do remember the last scene, Marie, that you're going to, that you mentioned. Yeah. That was the tallest and the most elegant building on Cape Cod and it would still be that today. These are Ginny's stills. And that's at the dump. Well, uh all right, we'll go ahead and, and go back to oh. Nancy, unless you wanted, you want me to play the. That's good. That's good. I just have one more thing. Uh, we have a little project that a few of us are working on, at the uh, community building on Oak Street, in Harwich Center. There's a wall of Harwich residents uh, who have made outstanding contributions to our town, and it's unbelievable that Ginny Doan is not on that wall. Uh, so I'll just read a couple of things about her to all of you. Uh, we're going to send this letter off to the, to, uh, the town and, and I don't see why they won't agree to it, but uh, Virginia Ginny Sidstone Doan was probably best known as the town librarian at Brooks Free Library for 42 years. Under her leadership, the library grew to a renovated state-of-the-art facility, increasing its holdings tenfold. Ginny was a co-founder of the Harwich Junior Theater, a past president and treasurer. Her interest in Cape Verdean and theater literature led her to provide the research for the play, Branded Hands, A Habit of History, performed by HJT. Walker, interest, another whole night of interesting story on that one. Uh, she was a long-term member of the Harwich Park and Recreation Commission, a life member of Harwich Historical Society, uh, was on the 275 and 300th anniversary of uh, town, um, anniversary of the town being incorporated and her book birth of a nation story of Harwich's exchange building uh, was published in six, 1965 and Ginny was the brand marshal brand marshal of the cranberry festival in 1989 so here's to a beautiful building and here's to a beautiful woman that's it <laughs> Questions or I'd, I'd rather you get me off the screen and, and okay. have the lights on and have people ask questions. Sounds good. And then I can take a look at the, the chat window as well. It looks like we have a couple of questions in yeah. there. I, I hope it's not questions because I'm not the expert here. I hope the audience is going to tell me things. Yes, if you're closer to the light switch than me, please. Thank you. Much appreciated. And um, Nancy, I'm going to take you off the screen. Thank you. I want to not see, so that's fun. Oh, here we go. All right. All right, I had uh, someone comment that they thought they saw Warren Hunt, a plumber in the video. Hmm. Um, and uh, these movies are such treasures. Wonderful to see in here, Ginny, fabulous program. All right, so if anyone uh, watching online has a question, you can type that in the chat. And anyone here in person, let me know and I can uh, 
Colin, if you want to come closer to the microphone, uh, you can ask your question, state your comment, share some stories. Uh, I hope we hear from the Dones. All right, special request from the Dones uh, by order of Nancy. Do you have anything you want to share? Oh, there's so much we can talk about. Yeah, what do you want to send it? Just, say, know, just send it. One one right. second. Um, hmm. What was the phone? Yeah. If you are unmuted, can you mute yourself real quick and I'll call on you to ask a question. Thank you. All right, continue, Bob. Thanks. Yeah, uh, one of the things that skating rink up there, that was actually rock maple that they laid over. And it was done in the octagon pad. So when you roll the skating around, it was always with the grain of the wood. So you would destroy it. That, a lot yeah. of that, in the house on the floor in the Eli Gap. So a lot of us do have different uh, components from the exchange building that we say, uh, you know, it's okay. For instance, someone just gave me uh, the handrails going the back stairway, third floor, eight. Quite a few other things. Quite a few parts of the brick, I know, is reflected by a lot of people. And the society has quite a question. And those two, uh, the same glasses in the stairway, those are the ones uh, that we have. Okay. Good to know where it came from. I appreciate it. And to add to that, um, can, uh, can, they, can you mic them a little better? It's, it's a little muffled. Yeah, I'm going to try to find my way over to you without disconnecting. Get me off the screen, please. <laughs> you are not on the screen, Nancy. Oh, good. Oh, good. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> hang on. This is Nancy. Okay, hang on. I'm coming towards you, Andrea. Oh. Yes, we've got mold over here. It's for a historical yeah, society. Say. That's okay. That the beam that um, was seen being lowered, those very thick beams, really did end up as a mantelpiece in the house that my parents were building, along with the barn table that are not fully on the fireplace, but we dispersed with it. But we used that mantle as a, as a fireplace mantle. The beam. All right, we have an online question as well from uh, Priscilla Perkins. I'm gonna go ahead and unmute you, Priscilla. Go ahead and ask your question, maybe. All right, her question is, what was the vote to demolish? And I don't know that. I, we can certainly find out. I, I've heard stories over the years that it was as close as 16 votes, but I've also heard that that was a, a rumor. Can you just, um, can I show you something? Yes. Priscilla Perkins is married to Bill Perkins and Bill Perkins' father and mother, Arthur and Reba Perkins, uh, had the Perkins store in West Harwich, if anybody remembers that. And Bill and Priscilla gave me this book. I don't, I hope you guys have a copy of it. Here's one picture of the exchange building. Uh, but the book, I'll show you the cover, is basically it was something that uh, I think realtors put out and businessmen to encourage business. So can you tell us the title of that? Because we cannot uh, quite okay. see it here because you're on my laptop now. Oh, oh okay. It's Harwich, Mass. Uh, a beautiful summering place. And if you don't have that, I can scan it page by page and send you the pictures. But um, from, from a very uh, important family in the past of Harwich, and it was a great donation. It looks like the Perkinses are waving to you. I don't know if you can see them as well, Nancy. <laughs> oh, are they in the building? They are uh, on Zoom. Kathy Smith and I are waving to you, and Bill's in the background. Hi, <laughs> oh, I see you. Hi, guys. <laughs> okay. um, go ahead, Duncan. I'm coming towards you. Hey, Nancy. It's Duncan. Hi, Duncan. Terrific job, as always. Great to see you, sort of, I guess. Um, 
just thought I'd throw this in too. Um, did you know that Caleb Chase, also of West Harwich fame, purchased the note on the building in 1903 yes. and as a Christmas gift, gave the entire town the 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 um the building rent free, scot free, the ground up. It was in all the Boston papers, and it was part of making it a famous landmark. Was the coverage that that got all over New England. And and the second thing is, does this sound familiar to what we have going on with the schoolhouse in West Harwich? Right. Where all of the 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 um, student records, the attendance records, the grades. You may not want to know about that. Um, the class photographs, they've got a complete documentary history of everybody that went through that school for about three generations. And the, you know, again, like the town administration has got, it's got some ambivalence about these historic buildings. So it's an evergreen topic. And I want to thank you for doing this, Sam. Uh, building off of that, uh, we've got a couple of comments here in the chat. Um, I'm going to come back to the front here. Hello again. Okay. So, uh, Patty Twork asks, I am still unclear as to the motivational factor for destroying the building if it was more cosmetic exterior work that needed repair. How did Bell's Neck rate higher than the exchange building in the vote? Um, Dick and Sally Smith commented, if it cost 15000 to demolish the building, how much was it projected to repair the building? Yeah, I don't, I, you know, I've got to go and find that uh, ballot and that will tell us more information too. Okay, I heard somebody say, was it 25,000 for repairs or demolition? I heard it was 27,000. To repair? Yeah. Okay, $27,000 to repair. Mm. I can just comment on that too, is because there was a lot of rumors going around that it was a fire hazard, it was about to fall down and all that. And it was truly just the exterior that was poor. Interior, the, it turned out to be so strong, made out of all yellow pine beams, or the best wood of pine only lumber. And as far as the fire hazard, it had a working sprinkler system. In it. So it, it was not going to be a fire hazard. Um, at, at the time. So it, there's a lot of misinformation about the building too. Uh, so people didn't really understand how good that building really was. And timing was really bad because I think in 65 was when the National Preservation Act took place from the government. So that would help to solve, uh, you know, protect sites and, home, and buildings and things. And it was just literally just a couple of years too early because uh, a few years later, it probably would have gotten some funding and some other uh, things to protect it. Uh, oh, and the uh, this little um, the bulldozer, it's actually on the second floor. It's Todd Lee is the operator, and the bulldozer uh, was owned by Link Thatcher. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 and he, yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you for that information. Wow. Yeah. Bit of a glare, but there you go. There. Um, and I want to add too from Cheryl Baldwin, who is watching online. She says that uh, two of the beams from the exchange building were installed into my family home to support it when my parents expanded the round cellar into a larger cellar. So that's that from the Baldwins. That's good. All right. Great. Oh, Albert Rainio is over here. We're going to come over to him. I'm so proud of that building. I'm proud of Todd Hollich. I am a member here and I'm doing culture programs. Not only that, but I graduated from high school in 1952 from the exchange building. Wow. Albert, did you say 1962? 1952. Oh. You look so young, you know. <laughs> Albert does a wonderful program on history and really teaches our young people to love history and find that it's it's fascinating and fun. We climb up, we knew the fire uh, one. He let us climb up the ladder and we see Brewster. <laughs> we see how it's fought the ocean. Yeah. We see Chatham. 
And the reason for that, of course, is because the trees are down right. <laughs> but it was a great experience for me uh, being able to, the Cape Verdeans had, had a basketball team. They played basketball there. The 20 Links Club would have socials there, dancers. And I was an honor to be sitting there at the balcony watching. So I just like to let you know that it was a beautiful building and I hated to see it go. I watched Todd B pull the walls in because they're afraid the floors are gonna rot and roller skates are gonna go through and going to hear us. And that was not true. But that is another reason why I'm no longer director of public works in Hong Kong. <laughs> and we miss you, right? <laughs> Again, I think that we, residents of Howard, should enjoy Howard. I have been here now for 13 years as a dosa, and I, I just love it. And it's a sad to see the farmers market and people out there don't even know it's a museum in here, what's in this building. And to see it someday not be here. Okay. Well, we need a we need to do another book combining Ginny's work and uh, other photographs and paintings. I think that would be a nice thing. I definitely agree. All right. Any any closing statements? Nancy, you want to share with us? I think they've heard enough from me. <laughs> I wish we could have more. And we will fix uh, the VH test, uh, VHS tape works beautifully. I will get it digitized one more time and, and get it done properly. So thank you for your patience. And thank you for all your words of wisdom too. This is great. So Todd Lee was driving the bulldozer. Hmm. <laughs> Well, I think we were. We will uh, say good night. Thank you so much, Nancy, and thank you all. Bye bye.